Hello. Um, so I'm going to apologize like I do pretty much every time now about this being a little bit late. But I had a super stressful week. Probably the most stressed I've been in law school so far. And it wasn't even um, like academic related. So it was basically just about that dilemma that I told you guys about how I had already decided on this internship out of state and then something else came up that uh, was better and um, I mean not just better because the one out of state that I had originally um, accepted was great it would have been amazing but um, it also would have been really difficult like just logistics getting out there um, finding a place to live finding a way to get to work every day and it wasn't paid so a lot of things fell through for me <clears throat> excuse me a lot of things fell through for me in the money department around the same time that I got offered this other job here so it was kinda like all signs were pointing towards having to rescind my offer and it was awful it was like it was worse than a breakup <laughs> I think um, but I had to do it so I was just like a ball of anxiety all weekend thinking about having to call these people just because I hate letting people down and also because my school and I think most law schools have this policy of yes means yes um, because they don't want people leveraging their um, like leveraging internships against each other like accepting a position but then continuing to apply other places but that's not what I did at all. I accepted this position with full intentions to um, to take it, and it this other thing literally like fell into my lap. So, well, fell into my lap timing wise. I I worked for it, but yeah. So, I guess that's another bit of good news. I got the job. I didn't really say that explicitly, but so I will be staying in my city this summer and. Um, yeah, should be good, so we'll see. But I just wanted to explain that that's why I um, am late and have been stressed and uh, probably why I got this going over here too. All right, so I wanted to talk about um, acceptances and rejections right now. So last video I talked about, you know, taking the LSAT, getting your application in, all that stuff. Usually, once all your application materials are turned in, you'll get an email that's just a confirmation of the... Um, of them receiving your application packet. Some of these emails I didn't get till like two weeks after I applied. So then I got all excited when I got an email from the school like thinking that, you know, I was accepted. But really it was just like, hey, we got your email. So, um, I am a very sentimental person and I keep everything. Uh, so I actually have my rejection letters um, and obviously my acceptance letter too. So, I wanted to talk about that. Excuse me. Um, the first school I heard from is the school I go to now. So my first letter was an acceptance, which was nice because it kind of padded the, um, the sting. I think I'm combining two different metaphors, but anyways, it made it easier to get other rejections after that. But I will tell you something that was really scary. Okay, so I still have the acceptance letter. I was just going to cover up the school name. So this was the size of the letter. And you know how they always say that your acceptances like come in big envelopes. So, really freaked me out. <clears throat> yeah, that was the size. And then, and then you know this was the size of a rejection letter, same size. So it just depends. And then another um, school that I got into was um, Vanderbilt in Nashville, Tennessee, and that one came in a huge envelope. So that whole story about the envelope sizes mattering doesn't really uh, jive anymore. I don't think. Um, especially with a lot of things being electronic, because um, I'm going to uh, go through my acceptance letter right now and, and talk about some things in it, but um, there's just a lot more uh, electronic things. Like, you don't have to include, like, a, a huge, um, you know, schedule of classes or anything like that anymore, and I think that that was part of the reason why envelopes used to be larger. Okay, so I get my acceptance letter. I got it on February 5th, 2009. Very official. And um, they just spend a very tiny paragraph saying, you know, congratulations, we are delighted to offer you a place in the fall 2009 entering class. And then immediately they start talking about money, of course. Um, 
I had to submit a non-refundable $500 deposit um, to secure my spot. And that had to happen no later than May 1st. So I had about uh, three months, which is kind of a long time, but it, it kind of, uh, I think my last, I got my last letter like mid-April or something, so it was cutting it close. Uh, luckily, I didn't have to like make a decision before I'd heard from anybody, though. Um, then it has some financial aid information, uh, just dates, um, you know, residency stuff. If you're going to go to school out of state, you need to figure out that stuff. Um, when they need to receive your transcript by, um, this one was July 31st. So they needed to have, you know, that's basically would be all of your grades. I was different because I actually didn't technically graduate undergrad until um, the summer. So I didn't get my final transcripts until like August. And I, so I had to like work some things out with the school regarding that. Um, yeah, and then just like health insurance stuff, you know, telling you about housing and all that. So that was good. Um, and most of the stuff you could do online. Okay, so then they invited me to something called um, Admitted Students Day. And I don't know if every school does this, but it's really cool. Um, and since I went to undergrad in the area, it was really easy for me to get over here and actually do this day. It was on March 21st, so about a month and a half after I found out that I was accepted. And you go and there was, um, I don't want to like list everything because that would be boring for you. But um, basically there were uh, sessions. These, these were the sessions. How to pay for law school, um, career services, and then the student's perspective. So there was a 1L, a 2L, and a 3L there to um, answer questions. And then, um, oh, this was the coolest part. You got to have lunch with the faculty and other like students in the law cafe. I'm sorry, I need to turn that off when I'm creating these. Um, and then they did campus tours. So that was fun and got me really excited about stuff. Um, they told you about scholarships and then Okay, this was really interesting too. Wait, I was going to see what I wrote on the back of this. Oh, interesting. I mostly just wrote about money stuff. Apparently I was already stressed about that. Okay, so then they also handed out this piece of paper that um, has first, uh, which I think is really cool, it tells you like all the different um, undergraduate institutions that people came from. So, a ton of them. And then, it has these um, entering class profiles. So it tells you like the median LSAT score, median GPA, different statistics. Um, just, I guess, so you can see how diverse it is. And um, I think that might be all I had in here. Let's see, sorry, this might be boring. I think it was just more reminders of the different dates. Yeah, okay, so that's what I did. I went to Admitted Students Day, and I would definitely recommend it for anybody that can make it. I think they might have them in different parts of your state, like uh, here they have them in different parts of California. So, like if you're, um, you know, 400 miles away or something from where you're gonna end up going to school, then they might have like um, a different reception somewhere. And what's just nice about it is you can ask questions and, um, you know, like this is a one way I'm speaking at you, but to actually have somebody there who you can talk to, it's great. And it put my mind at ease about a lot of stuff. So that's how it went for me. And um, <clears throat> I don't remember how it worked giving them my acceptance. I think just the $500 deposit was basically the acceptance. Oh, <laughs> I just found something else, which is kind of depressing. but. Somebody asked a question about this uh, recently, so I guess I'll bring it up anyways. Um, which is basically the rising cost of law school and um, it possibly like not being worth it, you know. The problem is that they're just letting way too many people into law school. And I'm not saying like a, oh, they're letting people in that aren't smart. That's not true. These are all very intelligent people. but. These are also all people that are afraid to go into the job market because it's just not a good one. So instead of 
maybe pursuing something else that they had originally thought they were going to do. They just continue on to grad school as like a means of postponing. That's my theory on it anyways. <clears throat> so there's just a ton of extra people here. There's like a whole organization on my campus for people who don't even want to be attorneys. Like they want to use their law degree to do something else. Which, you know, I can't take that away from them, but <clears throat> in some ways it kind of makes me mad because I am actually here to become an attorney. And I feel like when there's just like a ton of ton more people trying to get in, it makes it harder for other people to get into and it makes it harder for us to get the internships and the jobs and stuff. I don't know. But so the prices. I will tell you what this says. Um, this was what I got in the packet at Admitted Students Day. Estimated costs. Total resident fees. $32,000 a year. And uh, yeah, so those those were just just for um, <clears throat> tuition. Then estimated living expenses, $19,000 $898. So altogether $52,000 a year. So I knew right away it was going to be like a $150,000 expense because I don't have any help. Like any, my estimated family contribution on my FAFSA is always zero. So, um, so when it says $52,000, that's how much I'm taking out every year. <clears throat> and it's terrifying. Trust me. It's, I don't like the thought of that. I mean, by the time I graduate, I will basically have been able to buy a house but um, I'm super passionate about it and I've never wanted to do anything else so I just have to figure that I'm gonna make it work and um, it's just I don't really have a plan B you know and now that I'm two years in <clears throat> I especially don't have a plan B I'm almost done and I can't keep myself up at night thinking about the what ifs you know um, what if I don't get a job or what if I can't pay for stuff because I'm here now, and that might just be a, um, I might just be like avoiding the problem or something, but I have enough to stress about, to not stress about that. Um, besides, they have really good programs for uh, loan deferment, uh, for like economic reasons or for uh, not having a job, or there are a variety of reasons. You can pretty much defer your loans indefinitely. Um, not that you would really want to, but uh, it's just good to know that, that it's possible. So my advice for people who are really concerned about this is just to only go into it if you're passionate about it because it is tough and it is stressful and you are going to go into a lot of debt um, unless you have savings or whatever. So, but if it's what you want to do, I mean, you've got to do it, right? So uh, just bring like your perseverance into it, um, get creative, network, those are all especially important now because um, it's just, it's less about, it used to be that you could graduate law school and you were pretty much guaranteed a job. And now we really are competing with each other for jobs. So um, honing your personal skills is incredibly important. So that would be my advice. And then, because um, I mean, getting this acceptance letter is just the first step for succeeding. And um, the school will do all they can to help you though, because I don't mean that just in like a, um, in a nice way like oh they're super sweet they do it because they want their ratings to be high and if people drop out their ratings lower so basically if you get accepted into law school they will do everything they can to keep you there and to help you succeed and help you pass the bar so rest assured knowing that once you're in you have this team of people who are there to help you succeed so anyways that is it for today uh, not sure what I'm going to talk about next week, but hopefully I will be more prepared. I know I say that every time, but um, yeah, so I hope everyone is having a good week, and I'll talk to you soon.